You know what they say in the YouTube world? Another day, another video. Yo, Carla Fretta, my name is Ardalur. This is an awkward way to put the hand on. I was going to do this, but this is in the way. Yo, Carla Fretta, my name is Ardalur. And today I'm going to talk about how I go about fixing overexposure within Premiere Pro. I was going to show you, you know, what tools you need and how to read them. And also, you know, a little bit talking about what overexposure is and when a photo can be saved and when it, you know, cannot be saved. So without further ado, let's start this video. All right, so the number one best tip ever, hands down, on fixing overexposure is... I'm putting drum load there, drum load. So the best way to fix overexposure is actually to prevent it from happening in the first place. I know it's a silly tip, but it's true. Now, however, sometimes, especially in run and gun situations like vlogging or other run and gun style of video, making video production, video uh, creating videos, you know, you are going to run into problems like overexposure, even underexposure in white balance issues because you just need to get the shot on the spot. Now, I'm here to tell you that many of these shots can be fixed. Not all, but uh, some of them. And as I've been saying, I'm going to show you how I go about fixing them so they are, you know, usable. If you're just here for like a one specific information, I'll leave timestamps in this description and you just jump to the places that you want to know. All right, first thing first, what is overexposure? Overexposure is simply put, basically footage that is brighter than it should be. Too much light has been allowed to come in the camera sensor, resulting in loss of details in the highlights and in the whites, and almost no shadows to give contrast. And depending on how overexposed the image is, it's going to result in how much you're able to pull back the information and creating, you know, a fairly usable footage. However, it's never going to be perfect. So just keep that in mind. We are not creating perfect, we are saving disaster. <laughs> That's what we're doing, disaster savers. Anyways, let's dive into Premiere Pro and I'll show you the tools that I use and the scopes you need to know how to read and then how I tried my best to fix it. So first thing first, we need, uh, I, don't, I don't use glasses. Uh, I have a perfect sight, but uh, they look cool, okay? All right, so welcome to Premiere Pro. Now the tools that you are gonna need to know how to read is under here in the Luma scope in the Lumetri scopes here, and this is this here. This is the waveform Luma. If you right click, if you don't show see this, you can right click, and then you can go to waveform type and Luma, and you have this here, waveform Luma. This is pretty easy to read once you understand it. So on top here, you have the lights, and as you can see, this is the whites. If it goes above 100, or if it's here at the top, there is no information. The camera, it's too bright, you've blown out the image, and the camera cannot really retrieve that perfectly, okay? And the same goes that down here in the zero, this is the dark areas. If it goes below, like all the way down here, we call it to crush the shadows, and it's the opposite. Then there's no information in the shadows, it's too dark. You don't want it to go either 200 or above, or, or below zero. You want it to be there in between, creating nice contrast. Now you can also see that this is a perfect representative of this image. Here, this corner here is this corner here, and this corner here is this corner here. You can see my face here. You can see it here that this is where my face is at. And this here, this is the trees, you see? So you can see that I move, and you can see that this moves with me. Now that you know this, I'm gonna show you how you can use this. You can also see one more thing just to see that you understand. If we drop the whites, now you can see that we're starting to get little information here. This tiny, tiny blue here, and you can see here that this side of the sky is not really that blown out. We can still retrieve information there. Now here's what I do. Depending on how severe your overexposure is, you do less or more than me. All right, this footage here is pretty, like this is very overexposed. Like this is almost beyond repairable. Now, before I show you how, how I fix this so it's usable, I wanna show you a footage that is completely overexposed. This here, there is no information in the <laughs> shadow areas. Everything is above 100 and this is beyond repairable. If you have footage that looks like this and you want to fix it, the best way is to highlight it like this and then press delete. This we don't want to see, okay? <laughs> this is not fixable. So what I do to fix this, we go to Lumetri Color. You find it up here in Color, and then you have Lumetri Color here. And we start in the Basic Correction tab. Here you can manipulate the exposure, contrast, highlights. You can move them up or down. You can move the shadows down or more, uh, up, and lights and blacks. Very good place to start, okay? In my opinion, this footage here is almost to the point where I think it's not really... Like, this was very very 
overexposed, but you can do some uh, magic here, and I'll show you what. So what I start by doing here, you can see that my face is almost to the point where it's too overexposed. This side of my forehead is almost at the top. So I start by always, always checking the highlights. So I'm dropping them down. This footage is pretty severe, as I've said now thousands of times. You can even do a drinking game if you like of it. So here we, I would drop this uh, almost to 100. That is not ideal because your image will become very gray and dull and it just doesn't look so nice, but hey, we're gonna fix this somehow. So hopefully, it, when I encounter overexposed fo footage, I ho I'm always hoping that it should be like somewhere around here. But uh, this case, we take we take it all the way down, okay? Now for the blacks, maybe we can take them a little bit down. And as the same as the overexposure, you don't want the blacks to go all the way down here. Then you start to lose information in the black areas. And so we go here is not touching. And the whites, if I take whites too much, it just becomes gray. And this is here you can see a perfect example of that there is no information. You can see that here we have a little bit of information in the sky. But on top here, there is it's, it was too blown out. So if you drag this down, okay, this is not white anymore, but you can see that the camera doesn't know what's behind here. So it's just like grayness. It's not nice at all. So we can't really do that, but maybe we can drag it down just a little bit. Okay, already this looks better. You can see before and after. All right. What I would also do here, I would probably drop the shadows a little bit and then I would go into curves. All right, so once I'm happy with what I've done in the basic correction, I'll go down to the tone curves. If you do not know what tone curve is, here's a quick crack course. Crack course. <laughs> I'll give you a crack course, man. It's a <laughs> crash course, crash course, a crash course. On top here, we have the lights, and here we have the highlights. Here is the mid-tones, here is the shadows, and here is the darkest, the blacks, okay? If you move this line here above this middle line, not this middle line, the middle line here, if you move it above, you make everything brighter. And vice versa, if you take it down, you make it darker. Now, the cool things about tone curves is that you can isolate the spot. So let's say we just want to manipulate the darks, then I can put like this here, and now I can just move this here, you see? And then I'm moving the dark areas in the photo. Now, what I do when I'm... Uh, encounter overexposure, what I usually do the back then, back then, what I usually do now, not back in the good old days, but now, I click here, make one here, and then I drag it down, depending on how much I would need to drag it. I'm always looking at the Lumascopes, how much can I take it down? I think, no, that was not what I wanted to do, here. If this full image was not this overexposed, what I usually do then is I add another one here, I don't drag it up to create an S-curve, but I just make it level. So it's not, I'm not dragging down the highlights too much, all right? You just have to play with it. Where should you put it? Maybe sometimes I go down here. Is that, looks that nice? This looks a little bit weird to me. So I want to have it right around here. This already looks better. You see before and after. We're adding a little bit of contrast to the shot. Now I go back to the basic correction. See, this place with the forehead, we would probably not be able to we won't be able to fix this, I think. This is just gonna be uh, like it is. As you can see now, this like the, the difference is huge. Like This is already a little bit usable, but what happens when you drag this much of highlight down is the image becomes a little bit flat and boring. You become pretty gray. There's more than flat, you're gray. So what I do then, I go to creative, create a tab here, and we start to mess with the saturation. We can start with 125, and already this image is starting to become a little bit better. I like now to add a little bit of contrast to make up for the grayness, so we can try to start with 40. Uh, too much, in my opinion, for this. 25. Here, okay, this is way, way better. Oh, it's still a little bit overexposed, but I would maybe drag down the shadows a little bit more, like this. Maybe we can drag down the whites just a tiny bit more. All right, go back to the Creative tab. Maybe we can add a little bit more. Vibrance, 15. Okay. The difference now is, is pretty huge. You have from this to this. And this, I have not added any LUTs or anything. Basically just messed with the basic correction, tone curves, and then creative. You can be done here. But I feel like I need. I would like to add one LUT. I have a LUT that is... So I would like to add one LUT. Uh, 
I have a lot that is called Stockholm Syndrome. It's like a little bit teal and orange with a tiny bit of, uh, of fade to it. So this is way too much, but maybe here I get a little bit of the color back. And you see the difference? All right. And I would also like to drop this to one and maybe this to two. And then I think we are, I mean, this is not perfect. And as I said, this footage was way more overexposed than I wanted to, but this is the work process that I do when I fix overexposed footage. I have the Lumascope. I always have the Lumascope up, up the waveform here, but I drop the highlights depending on how much. Hopefully I have, don't have to drop in too much, but I drop the highlights. I drop the whites a little bit. I compensate for that by taking up the contrast because when you are dropping both whites and highlights, you are losing a lot of the contrast, but you can compensate with that by dragging up the contrast. Maybe we can drag up this more here to create a little bit like more contrast. I usually drag down the shadows too to get these shadows a little bit more down so we can create some contrast because as I said, when footage is overexposed, the shadows are very, like they are too bright. So their contrast is next to zero. And I even drag down the blacks a little bit. Then tone curves, and here I mess with the tone curves just a tiny bit to see if this is something we can work with. Let me see. Maybe we can add it like this and then drag down. All right. Now this is not perfect. It won't ever be. We don't We don't have all, all the information. We, we f***ed up. We f***ed up. We should not have allowed this to be overexposed. But for a vlog and even other videos, this is definitely usable now. And you can see the difference, you know, here. It's before, after. Before, after. Huge difference. This is usable now. And Lumascopes, you can see that my face is starting to drop. Yes, we have a little bit problem here with the forehead. Can't really fix that. But the... Uh, the footage is officially usable now. I don't have to go back out in the forest and film this again. So that's it for me today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments down below. I'll do my very best to answer you. <laughs> and, and yeah, this is, you know, basically, if you could smack that like button for me, it would really help me out. And yeah, this is basically how I, how I do my, how I fix uh, overexposure. If you have any other suggestions, please let me know. I would lo love to learn from you. I don't have all the answers. I have like maybe 0.5% of the answers. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.